Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, Elizabeth, how are you? I'm fine. Is it Mercy? Yes, this is Mercy. Let me just rename. <laughs> yeah, this is Mercy. Okay. How are you keeping? I am well. How are you? I see you gave me three hours. What am I going to do for three hours? <laughs> Not three hours. So what usually happens is we have the presentation. During the first hour, we usually have the presentation and then a question and answer session. Then afterwards, we have about 45 minutes in the group sessions. And then we come back for uh, plenary discussions and what people have discussed in the group in terms of the um, group questions. Okay. Yes. So don't worry, the rest of the two hours is for group breakout groups and group discussion. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> no, don't worry. Did you get the, the final concept note? Uh, you sent me something. Uh-huh, yes. Where is it? So it has usually has the, like the question that you, the panelist, is answering. Then now the question, the group questions for the participants. So they'll have a discussion and then they come back and uh, present what they have discussed in the groups. All I have is concept, the role of women in African context, aim, objective. Oh, okay, panel, I see panel discussion. Panel pa parameter. Okay, the panel question, okay. So you can take you, you can take however much time you need with your presentation because today we do not have any time constraints and you don't have to speak the whole time. I don't have so much. <laughs> no, that's 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 all right. That would leave more time for questions and also discussion. So no worries okay. about that either. Okay, okay, fine. Yes, yes. So let me just check on the on the moderator who's supposed to join and the other people and then um, you can share your screen to see whether um, your I know I know your audio is okay. Are you going to use video? No. Okay. So your audio is fine. It's clear. We can just just try sharing your screen to see if the function is okay. Okay. Oh, I see a moderator now. You know, I have not looked at this. I'm so busy that I didn't even. <laughs> no, it's all right. And we really appreciate you joining us today. Okay. No, it's yeah. fine. Uh, Shabir always tells me to join. It's just okay. that I've never had. <laughs> no, share screen. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, clearly. Okay. So everything is okay, yeah. Slideshow. So now we can just let um, wait for people to um, get in, send a few reminders, and then we will start at the top of the hour. That's in the next 10 minutes. Okay, no, it's fine. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Musti. <laughs> Hi, Jamie, how are you? Good, thanks, Amy. I'm good too. Can, thanks for can, joining. So, thank you. yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me fine? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, great. Do you have the 
the final concept note with the group questions? Yes, I think I do. I have here the aim, the objectives, and yes, the group mm -hmm. questions. Yeah, I've got it all. Okay. All right, so you're good to go? Yes, yeah. So I will just... Um, in, so I'll, like, I'll open the meeting and introduce you. Mm -hmm. Then um, you will take over, introduce the workshop, what it is about, the objectives of the workshop, and then introduce Dr. Reggie. Great. Yes. And then after um, Dr. Reggie's presentation, then I'll just explain about, again, about breaking out into groups and what you can do is you can you can um, have a short question and answer session if anyone mm -hmm. has a question about the presentation and if not we can move straight to the group out uh, to the breakout sessions and you'll post the questions on the chat for people to discuss and then okay. i'll set the breakout rooms for about 45 minutes i think 45 minutes is usually enough for discussion then they'll close out automatically after 45 minutes. Great, and then we just go through the feedback and discussion from all of the groups. Yes. Okay, great, thank and you. And then in case there's a member of the board in the, who will join us today, you can have them give last remarks and close the workshop. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I will yes. do that. Um, so we we having like um, schedule power cuts in South Africa, and I do have a mobile modem that should be able to work without electricity. The only problem is they haven't been sticking to this published schedule. Uh -huh. so if I do fall off, I will say. Doctor Reggie is laughing. <laughs> but I um, if if I do I'm laughing that, because. <laughs> South Africa is supposed to be the richest country in Africa. If we mm -hmm. have load shedding like six times a three three times a day, that is times two, what mm -hmm. is affecting other countries? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, it's actually it's quite strange. strange. And I remember there's a time also South Africa had a water problem. I can't remember when it was. But I remember seeing it a lot on the news, people carrying around, around like bottles to go get, I don't know if it was drinking water from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like for me at two o'clock, it's supposed to go for me. Yeah, so uh, same for me at two o'clock, but for some reason, um, the schedule, it has, they haven't been sticking to the schedule uh, over the okay. last few days, but I do have a little portable um, internet that I'm working off of, so. I'm hoping like that should work regardless. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. In case. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, like I'm telling you, I'm also to... having a problem. Two, it will go. <laughs> it's mm. so ridiculous, you know. Normally, a number of people have, usually have joined. Let me just send reminders to our groups as we wait. This is so horrible.
ചില ഓർമ്മകൾ ആരെയും Hi Alex, welcome. Alex is our French English um, interpreter in case anyone needs French English interpretation. Good afternoon, everyone. 
uh, welcome to our month, uh, monthly Afro PHC policy workshop. We are just giving a few more minutes, uh, probably five more minutes for more people to join, and then we will start the workshop. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we can start as we wait for other people to join in. Normally, we have at least up to 40, 40 to 60 people joining the workshop. So probably they're just in the process of, of joining. So um, we're going to start our workshop today so that we are respectful of everybody's um, time. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Masi Wanjala. I'm a family physician from Kenya and the Deputy Executive Coordinator for AfroPHC. And I would like to welcome you all today to our AfroPHC policy today, which is on the role of women in African PHC. And um, to take us through today and to moderate uh, the session today, we have Dr. Jamie Collotti, who is a medical doctor from South Africa, currently completing her community uh, service here within the South African military service. She completed her undergrad graduate studies at the University of Witwatersrand, where she's also currently enrolled in a postgraduate diploma in tropical health and medicine. 
She is also pursuing a master's of public um, health at the Imperial College of London, hoping to pursue a passion in infectious disease modeling and management. She is a member of the Afro PHC executive coordinating team and lead for the clinical teaching workshops and mentoring. And right now, I would like to turn you over to Dr. Jamie Kolachi. Over to you, Jamie. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Mercy, and thank you for having me with you today um, as today's um, panel moderator. So as Mercy had mentioned today, we are doing the policy workshop on the role of women in African primary health care. And the aim of today's workshop is to explore the role of women in primary health care systems in Africa, the limitations and barriers to their participation, and how these can be overcome. And to discuss this today, we have our panel member, Dr. Elizabeth Reggie, who has been in a Wonka Africa Executive Committee for the past 10 years as the member at large and currently the treasurer of this committee. She's also a member of the Organization Equity Committee, World Wonka, and the Finance Committee of the Wonka World, and ex-lead of the WWPWFM Africa, and currently the chair-elect for the WWPWFM World. She holds a master's degree in family medicine from Pretoria University, and has also completed a fellowship with the College of Medicine of South Africa and has a postgraduate diploma in health science education from the University of Witwatersrand. She is an educator, clinician, administrator, manager, and researcher. And her mission is to encourage women to become leaders in any sphere of life. So we really appreciate her being with us today. And we will start off the policy workshop with um, Dr. Reggie's presentation after which we will have a short question and answer session from uh, members of the um, participating group. And then we would like to break out into smaller groups where we will have facilitators to go through a number of questions relating to the policy workshop that I will discuss after the, um, Dr. Reggie's presentation. And I'll also post the questions within the chat so that you will have access to them during that um, time period of discussion. And then after the discussion, which will last about 45 minutes in smaller breakout rooms, we'll come back together where we will have a larger discussion on what was discussed um, in the smaller groups. So thank you very much for being with us today. And I'd like to hand over to Dr. Reggie. Thank you so much for your introduction. Jamie. Uh, so welcome everyone and good afternoon. Uh, I don't know what's the timing in other countries, but it's afternoon here in South Africa. So today I'm presenting Women in Primary Healthcare Clinics, Challenges and Support. Uh, the outline of the presentation is objectives, women in primary health clinic, the role of women, reason of encounter at the clinic, utilization of healthcare service challenges, encountered by patients, challenges encountered by health workers, resolution and take home message. The objective is to define the role of women in primary health care, to explore the limitation and barriers to women's participation and involvement in their primary health care, to determine and sustain solutions to increase participation and involvement of women in the primary health care. So as you all know, we have a patient who comes seeking for help because they're sick or they want to have prevention or they're bringing their children or they want to ask some advice. So they need to be educated. Then we have the nurse in the cl clinic who can be an enrolled nurse or a professional nurse. They currently do the vitals for us as doctors and also help us with also consultations. Then you have the medical doctor who consults the patient or sees the patient and decides whether he or she can be treated in that hospital, do the necessary management or send the patient to a next area. Then we have the allied 
patients, the allied workers. We normally have a physio who comes as an outreach or an OT who comes as an outreach, speech therapist, optometrist, those are our allies that, and also social worker who comes around once in a week to assist with patient care. In some of the clinics, you would see family physicians as consultants who come there and see difficult patients or advise or do clinical audits for planning and also to assist and give more education to the, to the patients and to the nurses. You have a cleaner who cleans the environment so that we don't have uh, other comorbid diseases that can be led by, the, by these infections. In all hospitals, you have a help, um, help sister who is there to assist you to go to the various departments or rooms and also to file your documents. We also have a pharmacist who assists with medications, gives us advice on how to take the medications and also makes, uh, sh makes us aware that certain drugs are not available or there are side effects of those drugs. Now, the role of the women in a primary health care. So seeing all those pictures that you have seen in those in the previous slide, you can see we become a caregiver. Sometimes we become educators by teaching or giving advice to the patients and making them understand what is their disease or what they should do. Then the consultant or the doctor can be a mentor trying to show the people what to do or uh, giving guidance. Then it's an advisor. You can be an advocate for the patient in the community or for, uh, for any other treatment. You can also advise the patient on how to deal with things. You become a good communicator because you have to speak with patients. So as you speak more with patients, you become a good communicator and you try to understand their background, their culture, and discuss things along that side. You might also become a good friend to certain patients because they want to give information that they are not able to tell other people. So you are a good friend. Then you are a breadwinner because sometimes we, we have women who are single parents or we also have women who the family depends on them. So we have different roles for these women in the primary health care. Reasons for encounter of women patients at the clinics. The first and most co common thing that you can see is maternal health. That means the mother comes to the clinic for antenatal care or postnatal care or to get seek advice for pregnancy. So what we have realized here is 3 million people die due to complications of uh, childbirth or pregnancy. And this has led to 32% reduction of income in the family and the expenditure for funerals and uh, over the years is uh, reduced by 25%. So if you see the economic status, if you study economics, it shows it has a direct cost effect on the funeral and medical expense that can reach one third of the family income. So maternal health is very important because it can lead to a big determinant of the financial background of our society. Now, we talk about sexually transmitted diseases. You can see the symptoms that is written down there. 
And this is common between the age of 20 to 50. It's because we have multiple partners or we are not taking good care of ourselves. Both partners are not taking good care and taking correct treatment as we wanted to expect. Then we have the non-communicable diseases, which is hypertension, diabetes, cardiac diseases, asthma, and cancer. In the world, we have 4.7 million women dying before the age of 70 because of this disease. And this can be prevented by giving advice in the correct time and by giving health promotion as early as possible, as soon as we see things uh, that is warning us and there are signs, so we need to avoid those things. And then finally, uh, not finally, in this uh, slide, finally, the teenage pregnancy and an adolescent issue is an increasing problem in Africa. Over 13 million adolescents might have an abortion or a teenage pregnancy during the period of teen, and they have mental issues, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and which can lead to a lot of disasters. They stop education, they die because of pregnancy, have premature babies and they have to take care of the babies. Maybe these babies might die because they have tried abortion and it was not successful and it led to septic or other causes of death. So you can see that this is actually a problem and we really need to move on. So the other reasons are HIV, TB. If you look, there's an increased number of HIV in South Africa in 2019. And out of that, 36% of the adult women were infected by TB and 11% of the children under 18 were also infected by TB. So you can see that HIV and TB go hand in hand and women are really affected by this infectious disease. The next that we can see is breast cancer and cervical cancer. You can see that in the world, one uh, half million of women die of breast cancer and cervical cancer. And in South Africa, breast cancer is becoming a leading cause of death in uh, South Africa. The next one that we have is the violence, domestic violence which is very common at home, on the street. It can be because of close partners or non-partners. It can be anyone. It can be in a prior public sector or in the private sector or private, like your house. Uh, like the study that I had done, we could see that the girls were taken to the victim's home and they were raped there. So the victim, because they know each other, they go to the victim's home and then they get raped there. And then the, they stay there and they have violence because they, they start arguing on each other. So you have physical violence, you have sexual violence, and you can also have uh, psychological violence. The mental health issue is encountered mainly after violence. You can see that violence leads to mental health issues or and depression is the commonest one that you can see. Uh, you can see that 4.5% of the population has mental health. And um, 
we in women you have anxiety disorders perinatal depression eating disorders postpartum depression bipolar disorders and borderline the disorders and this can cause a lot of problem during their work period during their life in the society then we have the elderly abuse and here you can see it is close partners that actually do physical abuse psychological abuse even some women i remember i saw a grandmother who was sexually abused by her own grandson and uh, friends because they were under the influence of drugs they came home and asked for 50 rand and she refused and then she was sexually abused and they broke her fingers and financial exploitation is also common because if the mother grandmother has money then they want to steal that money from them and some places you can see negligence and <coughs> they are they are not taken care no one bothers about them now utility of the health service if you compare the gender differences you can see 33% of the women actually visit a doctor despite people saying there's a high mean number of visit at the primary health care by a woman uh, for diagnostic purposes uh, we only have 33% of people visiting a doctor but mainly they come to the hospital for screening or preventive aspects studies have shown that a higher medical care utilization and medical charge is seen more in women than men with exception to hospitalization because most of our hospitals in africa are free for deliveries and for child care in in this is a, a study done in pakistan where tuberculosis was the most killer uh, one of the top six killers among 15 to 20 49 years old what they found is that women were not able to come to the hospital because of the following reasons limited autonomy expenditure on women's health was not a priority unassisted travel is disapproved the distance to the health facility and the time to travel was long and then most of the health facilities had male doctors or male personnel that they felt ashamed to go and attend those hospitals similar experience was seen in egypt where you can see that 30% were not able to access the hospital because of transportation finance 42% were not able to pay for their health care service permission was denied <coughs> and lack of female uh, physicians so we can conclude that factors preventing women accessing facilities in africa is access to health affordability cultural and personal issues availability of health care workers now looking at the hospital or the clinic per se you can see that 70% of the global health workers who who are in the front line are women yet we only have 25% of these women as senior managers or leaders challenges faced by health workers its increased workload low status gender pay gaps which is still seen in north um, uh, north africa and east africa 
low pay and often unpaid role, especially in the lower category of workers, facing harsh realities and harassment, violence against women, limited, limits their ability to do their job of caring to, for others, low moral, which leads to low moral, ill health, and it impacts the care. Shortage of protective PPEs, especially during COVID. The barriers faced by women undermines their well being and living, livinghood, and it holds back their uh, strength to improve themselves, and which will negatively impact the health system. Remember, the 70% of the health care system is managed by women. Solutions to patient's problem, it's to improve the health education of the females and encourage them to work. This is a study done that shows that the impact on curative services inversely uh, is inverse if the education is not done. So if there is a more education, the curative service will actually be properly utilized. And also you can also take care and also take care of the family health education and promotion at the clinics and the district, utilization of community health workers as their extension, extension of our service so that you can go to the houses and also give health. In South Africa, there are community health workers who take chronic medications to the, to the houses so that the patients can get their chronic medications if they are stable. Education among the male counterpart on every visit so that they can understand the importance on why a woman's health is to be taken care. Encourage women to become health workers or doctors and assist a woman at every encounter. Also ask community health workers, allied staff like health promoters to spread this message that women must be taken care. Solutions for the managers in the primary health care, gender equity at work. There is a rapid employment uh, growth in South Africa among the young women nowadays, especially we have more female doctors when compared to when I was studying. So they are getting employed and they're empowered into leadership role as soon as possible. There is laws on sex discrimination, sexual harassment, equal pay is established in most of the places especially in the public sector and social protection is uh, their loss around it. Though it is not completely followed their loss. Health systems are strong when women deliver them, have equal say, in, especially when they have equal say in designing and delivering the system because we have noticed and studies have shown that women have made changes and improved the quality of service. So here, WHO has stated, the enjoyment of highest standard of health is one of the fundamental rights of every human being without distinguishing between race, religion, political, beliefs, economic and social condition. By empowering women, we are sustaining the development goal and realization of the human rights. When women are empowered, the whole family is empowered, including the future generation. As primary health care relies heavily on women, 
our area of success will be on education, health education and awareness. It increases the women's self-esteem, empowers them to serve the community by improving the health of the women and the health of the family. We train them as health educators and also as career givers. Another study has shown that the provision of health education to women empowered them as health educators in the community and has improved the family and the community members of that society. The take home message that I would want to give you is a healthy and safe environment, build positive culture by motivating women, improving their self-confidence, provide equal access to resources, optimize work-life integration, transparent support for gender equity in leadership selection, formal and informal professional development must be given to women. Women do not fall easily but live with hopes. Despite many challenges, women, they strive to success. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that presentation, Dr. Ritchie. Um, welcome to everyone else who has joined us since we began. I see our audience has grown quite a bit, which is quite exciting. Um, before we move into our group sessions, I just want to say that we do have English French translation available if anyone needs and also give anyone the opportunity to ask a question to our speaker, Dr. Reggie, before we go and discuss our group questions in our smaller breakout sessions. So if anyone has a question at this time, you can raise your hand or post it in the chat. Um, we have a GK who has said in the chat, thank you, Dr. Reggie, for your enlightening presentation. Anyone who has any questions? Um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Reggie, for that wonderful presentation. You've covered so many aspects of where um, women uh, fit within the primary health care system, both as workers and in the society and the challenges that they face. And I appreciate the fact that you also covered the issue of both physical and sexual violence at the workplace, because I think that is something that we don't really speak about, but it occurs. Um, for instance, um, right now, the Women in Global Health um, it has started a movement called the Healthcare 2 movement, where it's encouraging women to come forward and report or speak about any kind of um, uh, sexual or physical violence that they do face at work. And I think um, that is an important point that you raise because uh, women are perceived as weaker than men. And therefore, if a patient comes and they're happy with the work that you have done for any reason, they're more likely to attack you than they are to attack a male counterpart or a male colleague. So I think those are things that you have made me think about, and I think others in the room think about, which I think are important. And I just wanted to ask, on your side, do you have any um, projects or any kind of research or interventional um, research that you're doing in terms of helping to reduce any kind of sexual or physical violence in the workplace for women? Now, currently I have not started, but I know one doctor at Vets who is doing a master's in um, violence. I think it's uh, physical violence, but I know she's doing a research on it. Have I answered you, Mercy? Um, yes, you have. And I think it would be great to get in contact with her because I think she'd have some wonderful insights to share on that because I don't think we talk about it enough when we're talking about um, women in the workplace and primary health care and the amount of sexual and gender-based violence that we see in primary health care as well. 
So thank you for that. And at least now I know there's also a master's in, um, is it sex and gender-based violence you've mentioned? Yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. And the thing is that uh, it's something that I've realized that people want to keep it like a secret because it's something they don't want to open out because we do see people who are sexually abused they would come and like I said come and tell you as a good friend and when you say no can we report it can we do this thing can we fight against it no 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 don't do anything so people are scared especially they're scared of the men that have attacked them at work because those men can be on higher authorities or they, uh, they have promised them something and they are really scared, especially with lower categories. We do see that for promotions, they would actually uh, get abused. And when you open it out, then you are indirectly abused also, because I can tell you I've been, emotionally, uh, psychologically abused at work. And uh, when I open it out, it's a big, <laughs> it's like a taboo. It's like, who are you to tell us what are you do, what happened? You don't have any evidence. So how can you say such things? So you see, you have those kind of people who would actually tell certain things. I see somebody has raised hand. Yes, um, thank you for sharing that, Dr. Reggie. Um, that's, that's very difficult. And I think a lot of the time we encourage people to speak out about certain things, but we, all, we can't always control how the people that they speak to respond to that. And I think there's a lot of barriers in terms of um, when people actually do get the courage and feel comfortable enough to share their experiences sometimes they can get very negative feedback in that experience when they're sharing their experience and I think that just kind of perpetuates the cycle of people keeping quiet or keeping things to themselves um we have a hand raised from innocent some boy yes innocent are you able yes to uh, hello Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie, for, for the nice presentation. I really appreciate it. Um, I have uh, one concern, or uh, just a question, uh, on, on gender-based violence for the healthcare workers, especially women in the primary healthcare in Africa. Uh, mm -hmm. I have experienced it. I've been working with the MSF, Medicine Sans Frontiers, and we, we used to offer healthcare services to the refugees. And the, at that time, I was working with a Nduta refugees camp in Tanzania at Kigoma region. So uh, when we, 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 we talk on, on, on gender-based violence in, in primary healthcare, it seems uh, 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 the, the, the the topic is, is more is more based to to the healthcare settings, uh, apart from those who are offering healthcare services at the, the refugees camp. I know that in the refugee camps there are many organisations which are under UN umbrella, and the, some of them they are dealing with the gender based violence. And the, 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 they offer the service, but it, it's not to, to such an extent. So uh, my question is, when we, we talk of gender-based violence, especially for healthcare workers, and in particular women in the primary healthcare, we, we, we do focus on just the primary healthcare settings apart from those who are concerned, which are who are concerned with the refugees, or we just talking in all of them? And if we, we are talking in all of them, how can we, how can we help uh, those primary healthcare workers, especially women, who are offering healthcare, healthcare services in the refugee camps or in the 
organizations which are dealing with the refugees because I've been experienced that many of the workers who are working over there are men and not women. So we want to balance gender and we want to, 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 to get more women to be involved in the provision of healthcare services in the primary health care in Africa. So how can we help these uh, women who are working in, in the primary health care services, who offer services to the refugees to, 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 to get the balanced rate between the men healthcare workers and the female healthcare workers. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, it's similar to community health workers going to the various houses. You don't know the house. You don't know what kind of people you're going to meet, especially in hostels. You have crime areas where these hostels are and you are scared to uh, go there. So when I was in another district, we would actually send males, pairs, send them one male, one female. We would not send the females alone to those places to, so that if the males feel that it's an unprotective area, they would not even go to work there. They would seek for the community police to come along with them to those places. I know at refugee camps, you have people you are not aware and you're not sure. So health education to the female must be given, uh, female workers must be given so that they get reassured mentally and physically that they can come along with you, but you must work as pairs and you must work as uh, colleagues. Uh, so that you can allow the females to enter those areas. Because even in Ethiopia, I know that post-delivery time, uh, you, a male cannot enter the female's house post-delivery because it is culturally not allowed. But if a female accompanies the male community health worker, they're able to get the information that is required uh, after delivery. So you can have a combined effect because if it's a teamwork, it can help you. It, um, have I answered you, Innocent? Yes, thank you very much. And you're satisfied, thank you. Okay, thanks. Great, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Oji and Innocent for your question. We have some comments that have been shared in the chat where Joseph Anna has said, if victims are afraid to speak out, we need systems that they can trust, that they will be, that they will be believed and the attackers will be dealt with. And Rose Kankindi also added that we need friendly spaces for women to open up um, with what has happened to them. Um, I do agree that we need systems. There are systems in place so that people can open out. But the problem here is the victim has more support, uh, not the victim, the attacker has more support than the victim. So, and has more people that he can overpower whatever <laughs> support structure you have. So it is quite difficult and challenging for now. We need to still speak out. As for me, I would advise everyone to still speak out. Don't be ashamed. It's not a shameful thing to say that you were abused. Uh, it can be emotional. It can be psychological. It can be sexual. It's not a secret. No, no female is going to judge you because of that. Yes, males might judge you and some females might judge you, but your conscious knows that you haven't done anything wrong. So you must stand on that conscious and try to show these people that you are still strong and you can still carry on your work. 
it's difficult. You need uh, psychological support. You need good friends, somebody to talk to and be rest assured that whatever time it is, that person is there for your help. Mm. I think this discussion also just goes to show how complex a lot of these these things are and how we probably need multiple solutions um, going forward. I don't know if we have any other questions from any of our participants about Dr. Reggie's presentation, but if not, then we can probably move on to the group discussion where we would like to break out into smaller breakout rooms um, where everyone will be randomly assigned into groups. Please, when you get into the smaller breakout groups, we just like to ask if um, after a short round of introductions, if each group could just select someone as a facilitator and then another individual who will be the rapporteur who will take notes of the group's discussion because after 45 minutes, we just like to come back after the breakout rooms and each group, we would like to get feedback and share from that person who's um, reporting on, on what was discussed within the, the smaller groups. And I will post the group questions um, in the chat also when we've broken out into the breakout rooms. But just to mention them now, our group questions for today are what are the barriers and limitations to the involvement and participation in primary healthcare in Africa. And from there, we're talking about the patient community and the healthcare providers per perspective. And the, the second question that we want to look at for the group discussion is what sustainable solutions can we implement to overcome these barriers or limitations that we um, have mentioned or discussed. So with that, if there aren't any more questions pertaining to the presentation um, for Dr. Reggie, if you do think of any more questions during the breakout sessions, we can also always address those when we come back from the breakout rooms. Okay. Thanks everyone. So we will meet back together in about 45 minutes. Hi, Mercy. Dr. Reggie. Yeah. Um, Would you like to go into a discussion group as well? Can I be released? Yes, you can be released. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Being with Thanks us here so today. much for yeah. inviting me to the session. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, Joyce. We are moving to the breakout rooms for discussion. Would you like me to send you to one of the breakout rooms? Uh, okay, okay. Thanks. All right. Hello, Tammy. Oh, she's still connecting her audio. Hello, Tammy, how are you? Hi. You have just joined us when we are going to the breakout rooms for discussion. Okay. Should I send you to one of the rooms for the discussion session? 
Okay, thank you. All right. Hi, Cynthia, how are you? Hi, Albertina, how are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm fine too. You have just joined us when we are going into the breakout sessions for discussion. Would you like me to send you to a breakout room for discussion? Yes. All right, sending you right now.
Hello there. Hi, Nicodemus. How are you? Oh, fine. We How are you? Are, I'm fine too. You have joined us when we have broken out into rooms for discussion. Would you okay. like me to send you into one of the rooms so that you can join the discussion? Yes, yes, sure. All right, we're just having discussions around some three group questions on the challenges that women are facing in African primary care, whether from the community level and also yeah. from the healthcare worker perspective. And the then group? what are some of the solutions? Sorry? That's the first group, oh? No, that's the question that everyone is discussing in the groups. Uh, okay, and sure. then we are what are the sustainable solutions that we can come up with to overcome this challenge? So let okay. me send you into room two. Room two, okay. All right.
Hello. Hi, Austin, Ferguson, and Mohammed. We are now in our discussion groups. Would you like me to send you into the rooms for to join the discussion, the ongoing discussions? Hello. We still have about 30 minutes left in the group discussions. So if you'd like to join the group discussions, they're ongoing. I will send you to room two and room three. After the group discussion, we are going to have a plenary session to discuss um, the feedback from the groups.
Hi, Innocent and Francois. Yeah, hello. hello. Sorry, hello. I'm late. Uh, can you assign me to a breakout room? It's all right. In fact, the breakout sessions are almost over. Okay. Yes. 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 Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. yes. I was having a network now. Okay, so, okay. I was in a room, but uh, I was facing some uh, network problem. So oh, that's all right. Yeah, thank you. But yeah, I was there. Okay, no worries. So I'm going to leave you now. Uh, Francois, please close the workshop. Hi everyone. So so we we can everyone's going to come back now, right? And then we'll do our discussion. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I think they will come back. Okay. I think our group has already come. Yes. I'm just waiting for all the members to all come right. back. Oops. Um. Sorry, Missy. Uh, how many groups did we have? We just had two, room two and room three. Room two and room three. Okay, two breakouts. Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay, we're just waiting for everyone. I think we've almost got everyone back from our breakout rooms. So, Jamie, I've made you the host. Great. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Mercy. All right. Thank you, everyone. So, um, we're back from our breakout rooms where we discussed our group questions, our two main group questions. Um, so, we had two breakout groups, group two and group three, um, where we discussed our two group questions. So, now what we're going to do is we're just going to um, ask for feedback from both groups. And if we can have the individuals who volunteered to report back, just giving us a summary of what, what the discussion was within your small groups. And then if there's anyone else from the group who feels like there's anything that they want to add or anything that they feel like was not mentioned that was important, then they um, are also welcome to add that as well. So if we can have the... Um, the participant who will be presenting for group two. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, Jamie. Maybe you can, you can, you can, you can tell specifically who, who was the host over there. Sorry. Uh, who was the the person that's going to report? Yes. Uh, okay, okay. In, in, in our group, maybe, maybe, maybe I can ask Rawia to come out to, to report because he, she's the one who, who recording the, 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 the discussion. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes. So it's a great pleasure for me to report. Yeah, uh, we went through a, a very thorough discussion uh, on the issues, uh, main issues facing women on healthcare or on, on the PHC. Uh, I think yeah, we found out so many common problems, common issues in many countries. Uh, the um, one of the common issues and the main issues was the cultural issue, uh, and uh, the cultural issues, uh, the uh, non-secure environment, especially under a non-secure environment for the safety and anti-harassment and no harassment. Uh, uh rules or laws clear laws uh, and uh, no education and the uh, for the definition of the watches the gender issue on gender issues uh, in the workplace um uh, the uh, gender-based violence and it is uh, it was advised that you should have some kind of education on the what is what is defined as harassment and the gender-based violence and violations for the male health workers during the orientation sessions uh, before starting working. Um, 
we need access and protection from harassment. Uh, we need, uh, there is one of the main problems that the lack of uh, supportive services, especially in the mental, uh, so, uh, like in the mental issue, uh, health issues, supports, and the, uh, the other uh, activities like uh, the, the environment is not, um, women don't lack sometimes working mothers they uh, the sometimes the the uh, the facility is not equipped for uh, places to replace their children in so it is find it very obstaculous for them to work uh, during uh, long shifts uh, so uh, it just lowers their productivity so having a place uh, and commitment for the uh, Will, uh, will help w w women work better. Uh, we need the, to have a, a, a government support uh, for the uh, to uh, for women. Uh, as lacking the government support is one of the main issues we found in many countries. Uh, one of the uh, main reasons, the uh, the ways out for these problems that uh, uh, one one of our colleagues uh, said that. That women should encourage themselves and pre and and uh, believe they can overcome any problems to overcome the taboos and resistance to from the community they face. As and the, and we are still living in a community that looking at uh, women in healthcare to especially if they are working late uh, to by uh, uh, in a suspicious way. So uh, they have to believe themselves. They can. They should. Uh, think they are strong enough to overcome all the problems. Um, in order to overcome the mental issues or the uh, or the health support, they uh, we they suggested that uh, having team building activities like wellness, wellness day and uh, some activities to break the uh, the negative energy inside uh, uh, the health worker. Um, sometimes the religion and the uh, the uh, the language barriers also uh, they have uh, kind of uh, uh, issues that faces uh, women because sometimes they don't uh, due to religious issues some people refuse to take. Uh, uh, to be uh, uh, treated by ladies or vice versa. Uh, also, the uh, the language. Sometimes having some dress code of kind of uh, sometimes they, uh, yani, what do you mean? They encourage harassment or something. So um, those are kind of uh, some issues, and uh, we found figured out. And uh, thank you for my my two, group, uh, room two. If anyone else would like to add something uh, I missed or I. So, thank you. Uh, thank you so thank much you. for that feedback, Ravia. Um, and thank you for group two for engaging in that discussion. I think we do have some overlapping points that we will mention in our feedback from group three. Um, but thank you so much for for presenting on behalf of group two. Um, as Ravia said, does anyone have any additions from group two that they feel like they would like to add? Okay, if we don't- I think, hello, do you hear me? Yes, and yes, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I think uh, something to add on top of that, uh, we, we have a contribution from one of our member uh, in the, the second question was uh, saying what can what can be done so mm -hmm. that to overcome those challenges uh, and the various suggestions was, uh, was contributed from various members and the, one of them is, uh, is education the women and the specifically the women's should know who are they in the society? What are they supposed to do in their society? So being uh, for, for them to, to know who are they in the societies and to know what are they supposed to do in the societies, 
it, it can help them at least to, to move from, from one uh, level to, to another level or to, to, to remove the misperceptions which maybe are created by the society or by the women themselves, which, made the, which make them to feel them inferior and not to get involved in the, uh, in the, in the, the provision of healthcare services because uh, many members uh, contribute that they, uh, in Africa, uh, many females uh, uh, they are, they are not involved in the healthcare sectors or they are not taking science subject by perceiving that uh, some subjects are specifically for men. And it, by knowing that, we know in order for someone to become a medical practitioner, he or she must, having, must be having a background in, in science. So we, we have to remove that perception or that mis, mis, misconception that, that a science subject is, is, is only for, for, for men. So mm -hmm. science subject is, is for all. Thank you, Jamie. Thanks very much, Innocent. I, I definitely agree. And our group, something that we also spoke about with was education. Um, and I think that will come out in our feedback session as well. So thank you for that. Thank you. If, if there's no more additions from room two, I think we can have the feedback from room three. Let me just get it for us. So um, in room three, with regards to what the barriers and limitations are to patient involvement and participation in primary health care, we spoke about some general problems with patients accessing the healthcare facilities, distance to healthcare facilities, which is made more difficult if a patient is older or cannot afford transport to the facility, or if there's a lack of health insurance and they need to pay out of pocket. And we said that this can be made more difficult for female patients if they are not financially independent or they rely on their husband to provide financial security. They may not have the autonomy um, or the position to utilize those funds to actually seek health care. Or in certain relationship dynamics or cultures or religions, there may be this need for the wife to consult her husband, even if she is financially dependent on whether or not she can actually seek health care. And that's a barrier or limitation that that woman might face that a male patient may not face when it comes to seeking primary health care. And we also mentioned the education amongst um, some women that may start with local or traditional medicine before they seek out a public health care facility for their actual health concern. And there was also a mention about nomadic women who may move away from static health care facilities so that have a very nomadic way of life and are constantly moving. There's no facilities or systems in place to really follow up these women and have continuity of care with regards to their potential health problems. Um, and then we also spoke about women having responsibilities at home that also limit them from seeking health care um, as well. And then we also mentioned this um, issue of language barriers in which we said there may be difficulty in communication. And there was also a participant who mentioned that if we bring a translator into the consultation that also reaches confidentiality, but it also might limit the um, ability of a patient to actually speak freely and express what their um, concern is with regards to their health. And we also spoke about this lack of patient centeredness where participants mentioned that providers can be business orientated, that there might not be rapport and communication and patients may not be given the respect and time that they deserve, um, which may intimidate particularly female patients um, into not expressing their concerns freely, which might compromise diagnosis and care. Um, and then when we spoke about sustainable solutions to implement or overcome these barriers, we discussed a lot of 
issues around there being poor relationship between politicians and healthcare providers and that healthcare providers on the ground need to look for ways to work with politicians and advocate for these matters that we're seeing on the ground. So it might be that these women health problems are not given priority because there's not enough awareness about them or those who are higher up in power might be more male dominated and therefore th these healthcare problems are not getting adequately repre representation um, from, from that point of view, from an administrative and senior point of view. Um, so we said that we needed to have more advocacy from people on the ground for women's healthcare issues, as well as more research about recommendations regarding um, access to healthcare for women and female healthcare providers. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else from group three that they would like to add to the discussion. Okay, I don't know if there's any other comments or additions that anyone would like to make to either one of the group's um, discussions or presentations that were made. Otherwise, I think there's definitely been some overlapping barriers and limitations that we've discussed in both groups and several of them were actually also brought out within Dr. Reggie's presentation. So I think it just goes to show that a lot of these barriers and limitations that women's, women are facing in seeking primary health care and also those that are providing primary health care is something that's universal. Yes? Iska, would you like to uh, share something? Iska? <laughs> I don't know if that's a mistake. Okay. Um, well, if there's no, no other additions to our discussion, um, I think, unfortunately, our presenter might have fallen off of the chat, but... Thank you to Dr. Reggie for her presentation on the role of women in primary health care. And thank you so much to all our participants who came today to be engaged in the discussion. And for those who contributed, we really appreciate your feedback and conversations. And it really is a place to start. And we need to, as one of our group participants mentioned, we need to be the ones on the ground advocating and taking these issues that we see on a day-to-day -day base forward to these higher administrative and political decision-making people so that we can ensure that these women healthcare providers and women patients are treated equally and fairly within primary health care um, across the continent, but also globally around the world. And I think that what our discussions today show is that these problems are not unique to one specific country and that there's a lot of prevalent things that seem to come up across the globe with regards to barriers and limitations for women in primary health care and um, female health care providers as well. So before we close, I just wanted to know if we could get maybe some closing remarks from, I think Francoise also unfortunately dropped off of the the chat. Innocent, as a member of Afro PHC, I don't know if you would like to just um, maybe say a quick closing remark or two before we finish. Thank you. Thank you, Yami. Uh, my, my close remark is that uh, our participant number is a, is a bit low. And in, in Afro PHC, we are so many. So mm -hmm. we, we encourage to 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 to, to to, to share information to our fellows and to direct them to go to the Afro PhD website. Uh, and the, for those who are not yet to join our WhatsApp groups of various regions, they have to do so. 
Afro HCs, is, 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 it, it needs our support. It needs more member to be more active, not just to be a member. We have to be active enough. So I encourage more people to join and to be active enough. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you so much, Innocent. I definitely agree with what you're saying. And um, Afro PHC has a lot of activities, future workshops and CPDs that you can get involved in. So if you're not a member already, or if you'd like to get involved in more things that the Afro PHC is doing, please, we'd like to encourage you to visit our website at afrophc.org. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon. We finished a little bit earlier than expected. So thank you for the fruitful discussions and I hope that everyone has a good evening ahead of them. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. It was, it was great. It was powerful. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.